Hello, welcome to the My Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today we're going to talk about duplicating objects. If you go to Edit, you'll see down here toward the bottom we have Duplicate, Duplicate Special, which gives us some options, and then Duplicate with Transform. And we'll talk about all three. First we have a Duplicate, which has no options on its own. It just has a keyboard shortcut displayed here, which is Control D. So when simply just we create any object, say a cube, and you want a second cube that looks exactly like it, hit Control D, and now I have a second cube, which is a copy of the first. Pretty self-explanatory, but the video is not over yet. So we'll go back to Edit, and then we have Duplicate Special and then duplicate with transform which also does not have options on its own and has a shortcut of shift D so we'll go ahead and talk about that one first before we go into duplicate special and all of the options within so duplicate with transform is shift D so let's say I have this cube and let's say I want to create lots of cubes kind of going up in a staircase pattern so if I hit Shift D and I move the duplicated cube like so, so it kind of creates a stair stepping pattern, and then I hit Shift D again, the next duplicated cube retains that movement and applies it again to the next cube. So I keep hitting Shift D, each additional cube will move the same amount from the original. So I can quickly create the stair stepping pattern with these cubes using duplicate with transform. And that works with scale and rotation as well. So if I hit shift D, I'll move this over here, rotate it, let's say 45 degrees, and scale it up and keep hitting shift D it'll again do that same effect to the next cube and you see how it compounds on itself where eventually the where eventually the cubes are getting larger and larger and so that is duplicate with transform again you know pretty self-explanatory let's delete all those and now we'll look at Modify, uh, edit, duplicate special, which is Control Shift D, and has lots of options that we can look at. So edit reset. So we'll hit, these are our default options. So if we simply select our cube and hit apply, we'll create a second cube, and we hit apply again. It's simply the the default options. Edit the reset settings for duplicate special is essentially just your standard duplicate. So without uh, changing anything, uh, just using the, the straight up default settings and the duplicate special options, all you're doing is control D, the standard duplicate. And you'll see this section with the translate, rotate, and scale boxes. Right now they're all set to uh, standard settings. So translate's all 000, rotate's 000, scale is 111. If I were to make changes to these values, say 0.5 in the Y translate, and we'll say 45 degrees in our rotate Y, and then hit apply, you see it's moved up slightly. Let's, let's actually use a higher value of this. Let's say 5 for translate Y, and we'll do translate X too. So 5 translate X and Y and 45 degrees in rotation Y and we'll scale it to just to make it more apparent so now they've been scaled up to twice their size and hit apply you see how it's been moved upwards five units rotated 45 degrees and scaled to twice the size and then if I hit apply again with that second cube it does the same thing and so using these translate rotate and scale values is essentially the same as using duplicate with transform except that you're putting in values for what that uh, what those transforms are 
as opposed to just using the move scale rotate tools. So then let's look at our other settings that go with duplicate special. So first is geometry type and it says copy by default or an instance. A copy is essentially just a copy and I'm going to reset these settings so we get rid of all of our scaling and rotating. So a copy, hit apply, again just a duplicated copy of the original object. Now an instance, if we choose that, you'll see a couple of our options down here grays out. See cop with copy active these check boxes are available with instance active they're no longer available. But with an instance what Maya is actually doing is it's not actually duplicating the object. Let me go ahead and hit apply. Even though I do have a second cube being displayed, but what it's actually doing is displaying the original geometry again over here. And what that simply means is if I make a change to the original geometry, such as if I right click it and choose a vertex and move it, you'll see that the duplicated cube will also move in the same fashion. So it's literally mirroring whatever changes happens to the original cube, it'll happen to the duplicated cube because it's become an instance of the original. So I'll delete that. Let's go back to copy because copy gives us more options to work with. So group under so group under parent world or a new group. And you'll see that whenever parent is not selected, smart transform is no longer available. The smart transform checkbox. So what that simply means, and I'm just going to delete this cube and create a new object. Let's go for a sphere. And I'm going to create another sphere by hitting Control D to duplicate without any uh, special settings applied. And I'm going to scale it down so it's a little smaller. And I'm going to use a parent command. So if I select my small cube and shift select my larger cube, I can go to Edit Parent. And what that does is it makes the small cube attached to the large cube. So when I select the large cube, you'll see the small cube is also selected and will move with the large cube when I move it. So it's become a parent, it's become parented. The small cube is now a child of the large cube. And so when I use the large cube and move it around and rotate it, the child will also move with the parent. I can move the child independently but moving the parent affects the child. So whenever we duplicate, if we duplicate the small sphere that is a child of the parent sphere, we can control how the duplicate reacts to the parent. So if I group under parent, which is the default setting, if I duplicate this small sphere and move it over here, and then select the larger sphere, you'll see it is also selected because it has been grouped under the parent, so it has become a second child. If I delete that sphere, choose this one again and say group under the world and hit apply and move it over here. When I select the parent sphere, the new child or the new small sphere I should say is not selected because it is not grouped under the parent and is not a child of the parent. It has become a separate, a separate sphere that is not parented to anything, it's just within the world. This might be easier to see also in the outliner. So let me delete my small sphere that I duplicated and look at the outliner you'll see we have P sphere 1 which I'll rename to parent and then I can expand this group out and you'll see P sphere 2 which I'll rename as child 1 and you'll see that this relationship is indicated with this uh, parenting icon here where the parent is the top node in the hierarchy and child 1 is under the parent and connected. So again, when I choose parent to group under and duplicate my small sphere, you'll see in the outliner child 2 has been created and is also in the same hierarchy as child 1. And whenever I say group under world and hit apply, child 2 is created, but it is not within that hierarchy in the outliner. 
And then the next one is new group. So we'll choose new group and duplicate. A new group node has been created. And you'll see it's also parented to the original parent. So keep that in mind when you say uh, when you select a new group. It's not going to unparent it from the original parent sphere. It's just going to create a new group and then apply it to that group's hierarchy. So keep that in mind when you're using a new group that it will still maintain the same hierarchy as group under parent does, except adding a new group node. So I'll delete that group and we'll go back to parent. So below that we have the again the translate rotate and scale input box that we've already kind of talked about. But we also have smart transform. If I check this box, the input boxes for the translate rotate and scale become grayed out and no longer usable. But what it essentially does is again it's very similar to the duplicate with transform command where if I have Smart Transform selected, hit Apply, and move the sphere, and then hit Apply again, it'll again compound that movement. It's just instead of using the boxes to change the position, you're using Smart Transform, which will look at what you actually do to the sphere, and then do that to the next one. Again, it's very, pretty much identical to the Duplicate with Transform command under Edit duplicate with transform. If I select this sphere and use this command, duplicate with transform, it acts the same way. I move the sphere over here and then if I do it again, shift D or select it from the menu again, it'll just compound that movement again on the next following sphere. So that smart transform is essentially the same thing. We also have number of copies, so you'll see I hit I hit uh, Shift D over and over again to duplicate, you know, four or five spheres out that are moving in that compounded movement. I can simply choose how many copies I want. Let's say six, and whenever I do increase that number of copies beyond one, Smart Transform is no longer available. If I uncheck Smart Transform and then move this, you'll see that my input boxes are available to use. So if I want ten copies of the sphere. Let's say they're all translated, uh, let's say, five units in the x-direction, and they're all scaled up, say, 0.1 from the original. So it's not, we're not going to double the size, we're just going to increase it slightly, and then move them five units to the right in the x-axis, ten copies. So if I select my sphere and hit apply, you'll see now I have ten copies of my sphere. Let me zoom out some and you can see the change in scale is slightly growing with each additional sphere that is made until the last sphere if we move it back over here to toward the original you see it's gotten quite larger. So this is simply allowing you to create the number of copies you want without having to uh, do it over and over again. For example, another use for that would be if you're making a clock or a circular pattern of an object. A really easy way to do that, and I'm going to actually delete both of these objects and create a new one. I'm going to change the pivot point of this cube. So by holding down the D key, D is in dog, I can manipulate the uh, pivot point of this object. So I move the pivot point down here. So when I rotate this object now, that rotation is happening below the cube, and I can do this sweeping circular motion with it. So now I can choose, I want, say, 11 copies, and we'll rotate them 30 degrees in the z axis, and we'll hit apply. So now I kind of have like a clock face pattern. I'll hide my grid. So that was a really simple way and, and pretty quick way of just simply creating this kind of clock pattern where you know you have your 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, that kind of thing. And that's simply by creating uh, 11 copies and rotating them all 30 degrees from that 
original point and they all rotate around as they create each cube. So that's pretty handy. We'll do all this. And we will move on to the next one. We have these check boxes down here. We have duplicate input graph, duplicate input connections, and then instance leaf nodes. And then below that we have assign unique name to child nodes. So if we, since we've already talked about parenting and children, we'll go ahead and look at this last one. So I'll kind of create those sphere patterns again. I'm going to create So now we have this parenting um, relationship again. So P sphere one, I'll change it to parent one, and P sphere two, child one. So let's say I want to duplicate both of these spheres, but I also want to duplicate their relationship to each other. So I want to duplicate a new new parent with its own child. So if I just simply go to Edit, Reset Settings, and use the default values, where I'm creating a copy and grouping under the parent, and it's, this checkbox is not selected, so I hit Apply, and move this over. You'll see now I have Parent 2 with Child 1. So selecting Parent 1 and duplicating it, they automatically renumber the second one to Parent 2. If I select Parent 2 or Parent 1, it doesn't matter, and control D to duplicate one. Now I have parent three with child one. See how that's working? So let me delete both of those are copies. So selecting parent one with child one parented to it and choose assign unique name to child node. So now when I duplicate this, hit apply, I get parent two, but now it also has child two. So the child object has been renamed as well as the parent object. If I uncheck this and select parent one and apply, move this over here, I have parent three with child one. So renaming, so, so assign unique name to child nodes literally means that the children will get renamed in addition to the parent, especially when you're dealing with numbered things. So child one becomes child 2 with this uh, option checked. If it's not checked, the, par the parented objects, the children objects, will remain, will retain their names. That's what one thing that Maya does is everything has to have a unique name, but it's, if it's within a hierarchy of objects, if child 1 is parented to parent 1, it can have another child 1 object because that one is parented to parent 3. Parent 3 cannot be called parent 1. So I try to rename this to parent one. Oops. So if I'm renaming parent three to become parent one and hit enter, it won't let me. It, it'll stay parent three. If I try to, I middle mouse click and drag on this child one and try to move it to be parented to the original parent one, it'll get renamed to child three. So it retains those unique names. It's just that when it's within separate hierarchies. If there's two different parents with children with the same name, that works. I guess you can kind of think of it as within your own family. It's very rare to have siblings with the same name, but you could meet another person's child who has the same name as your child. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. By assigning unique names to child nodes, if you check this box, it will rename the children uh, to be a uh, different name than the original. Let's delete these and we'll go back to these top three. And we'll delete everything and create a new object. Let's go with the polygon cube. Actually, let's do a cylinder, something different. Alright, so here's my cylinder. So when I create any object, in my over here in the right in the channel box, you see I have inputs, and for this particular case, I have poly cylinder one. And when I click this, I have all my con my uh, creation controls like the radius, value, height, and so on. And whenever I duplicate this cylinder now, if I go to edit, duplicate, and move the duplicate over, 
you'll see the duplicated object does not have those inputs. The original one does. It has that history of the creation of the cylinder, and I can change that uh, those settings here. I can decrease the subdivision's axis, you know, increase subdivision's height, and so on. But the duplicated object remains the way it is. It has no other uh, inputs over here that can change its shape. That's by default. So down here we have duplicate input graph. And simply what that means, if I duplicate input graph, you'll see a lot of these things gray out and are no longer active. I hit apply. And I move my second one over. You'll see now that poly cylinder one, which was my original cylinder, has its inputs, poly cylinder one. But now the duplicate also has its own inputs, and I can change its subdivisions and radius and so forth without affecting the original. So anytime you want to duplicate an object but you want to have those those inputs active or those inputs available to you, make sure you check that box in the duplicate options. Duplicate input graph. Next we have duplicate input connections. What this does is if, if, if the original object is being affected by other things, then the duplicate will be also. So let me try and demonstrate that. Let's see. If we, let's say we apply a, a lattice deformer to this cylinder. Go to the animation tab and create deformers lattice. So now if I, I have this lattice and I can adjust these points on the lattice to affect the cylinder. I'm going to increase the uh, divisions of the cylinder so we get a drastic, more drastic effect from the lattice. Okay, so I have this cylinder. I'm just going to duplicate it and move it over here. So you'll see that it retained the shape from the lattice. That has stayed the same. But with the default duplicate settings, there's no inputs over here like before. Uh, but it just took the shape of the cylinder as it was and duplicated it. Okay? That lattice is not affecting it at all. If I choose the lattice and go to wireframe view, you'll see that the original cylinder is this purple highlight indicating that the selected lattice is affecting it and the duplicated cylinder is not highlighted. The lattice is not affecting it. So back over here select my cylinder and say duplicate input connections and hit apply. So now I move over here and choose the lattice and go to wireframe. You'll see it is affecting it. If I adjust this lattice point you'll see how the duplicated cylinder is affected by this lattice. Even though it's not within the lattice's boundaries it's still being affected. see it there. It's almost like an instance where even whenever I remove the original cylinder it even loses the effect of the lattice as, I, as it passes through them. If you want to know more, more about lattices I do have a lattice video so you can learn more about what a lattice deformer does and how it works. Feel free to click this handy link here to go to that video now. That's fine. And you can check out lattices. So duplicating input connections, anything affecting the original will affect the duplicate also. Uncheck this. Then we have instance leaf nodes. If you think about what a, a tree, a tree has a trunk with branches and then thousands of leaves. If you were to create a tree in Maya, which a lot of people do, uh, and you try to create each individual leaf, you're talking about thousands of unique objects. And so what people typically do is they will instance the leaves. They'll create one leaf and then instance it a thousand times. And so this will reduce the impact on your scene. So instance leaf nodes I guess is kind of like that. Let me see if I can't figure out a way to demonstrate that easily. Okay. I literally created a very simple, ugly representation of a tree. <laughs> so here you'll see in our outliner we have the trunk, 
this main object. We have a branch and then lots of little leaves, which are all these little cubes. And the leaves are all instance of the original leaf. So when I select the vertex from leaf one and move it, it'll move all the vertices on all the other leaves. So the, these leaves are all instances of each other. And the leaves are all parented to the branch and the branch is parented to the trunk. Okay. So let's say I want to duplicate my quote unquote tree. <laughs> so if I just use the default settings, edit, reset, and apply, so I've duplicated my tree, move it over here. You see now I have a new trunk, a new branch, and new leaves. If I select the leaf and choose a vertex to move, you know all these leaves move. However, the original leaves are not moving. They're no longer instances of the original leaves, they're instances of themselves. So you'll see that adjusting these leaves on the original tree, they're instances of each other, so they all get affected by adjusting one leaf on that tree. And the duplicated tree has its own uh, duplicated instance leaves, and when I manipulate those points on one leaf on the, on the duplicated tree, those leaves all get adjusted also because they are instances of each other. However, let's say I want all of my trees to have leaves that are all from the same instances. Select the original tree. Instance leaf nodes. And right now we're doing a very literal example, but you can kind of think of this uh, hierarchical group and think of how it can be affected or applied in future projects. So instancing leaf nodes and now hit apply. I now have a third tree with a new trunk, a new branch, and new leaves. But now when I adjust, let me zoom in some, when I adjust these new leaves, if I select the vertex point and move them, you'll see now it's moving the original leaf points as well. So if I adjust the leaf from the original tree, it will affect the leaves on the duplicated tree also because they, they're duplicating those instance connections, those uh, instances and relationships with instance leaf nodes checked. <laughs> okay, hopefully that makes a little more sense. So yeah, I think that's been all of the settings in the duplicate special options. And again, we have edit, duplicate, which is simply control D, makes a, makes a copy. The duplicate with transform. This is the same as using smart transform over here in the duplicate special options. And then duplicate special, which gives, gives us these other options such as duplicating the input graphs and connect input connections and so forth that the other two options don't have by default. So that's been duplicate. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any comments or questions, suggestions. If you have any uh, requests for what I go over next in the future, let me know. And again, thanks for watching.